The text to columns feature is used to break up phrases or groups of words in a cell into their own cells. For example, we've got a cell here that has a group of words, last name, comma, first. If I want to go ahead and break it up and have last name in this column and then first name in that, well, can't do it over here because that column's in the way. So what I can do is I can go ahead and right-click on the column C header down below and insert. And there we go. Of course, if you want to leave it there, your last name, comma, first, then have last name here, and then also have first name in that column. Then, of course, you have to right-click on column D and insert it there as well. So you can extract it without overwriting that and keeping the original data. But let me go ahead and hit undo because I just want to go ahead and write over the name with the last name and then put the first name over in this column. So to do that, go ahead and select the range that you want to extract and put the text into a column and come up here and click on the Data tab. Go to the Data Tools group and it's right there. You can see when I hover over it, it says that it splits a single column of text into multiple columns. So let's go ahead and click on it to start it opens up the convert text to column wizard. It's going to ask us a bunch of questions and based upon our answers it's going to spit something out for us and hopefully it's what we're looking for. And what helps is by us answering the questions correctly. And down below we got two types that best describes our data. Either it separated the data, that is, within the cell by a delimiter, meaning a character that separates it like a comma or space or both. Or if you don't have anything separating it but it's a fixed width, well, there's nothing fixed about it, but if it was the first three letters of the person's last name, and it was only the first three, that would be fixed. So you can go ahead and select Fixed, and then down below, click and drag this little tab that says, okay, the first three. But let's keep it simple, and let's go with the limited. Characters such as commas or tabs that separate each field, and click Next. Now what delimiter a character or characters is separating each field? It's not the tab. It's going to be the comma. Now take a look down below at the data preview when I check comma. It puts a line in between the two columns, but it adds a space before the first name. Why? Because the delimiter comma comes before the space, so it puts the space in front of the first name. If you don't want the delimiter to be added in front of the first name, then go ahead and check space, and say so you have a combination of delimiters. So that way it collapses next to it and it doesn't insert it along with the first name. And you can use other delimiters. If you don't have spaces or commas, you can go ahead and check other and then type in whatever your character is, like if it's an ampersand. That separates your fields. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that, not use that. And then go ahead and click Next. In the final step, the screen lets you select each column and set the data format. This column format that I'm going to be breaking it up to is going to be general for each one, or I can say text. For this one, select that one and say it's also going to be text. So you can go ahead and get a little bit customizable down below and say, well, this one's text, that one's the date, or this one's going to be something else. I'm just going to go ahead and put it back to general for each column, which brings up a good point that down below you've got two destinations, and the destination begins in cell B5. So if you look at B5, that's the first cell in the selection that we had to convert this from text to columns. So what it's going to do is it's going to take the last name and overwrite what we have here. And then in the next column adjacent to it, it's going to take the first name and dump it right in there. So it looks good. Go ahead and click Finish. Cool. Now you may be thinking to yourself, hey, wait a second. In the last training video, we learned about Flash Fill. Could that not work? Of course it could. But depending upon the structure of your database and exactly what you're trying to do, one may work better than the other. For example, if I go ahead and hit Undo, and I say, okay, I want to use Flash Field. Let me click in the cell next to it. Well, the problem with this is that it doesn't overwrite or get rid of this column here because I have to extract it first. So if I want this one to be last name, Clinger, hit Enter, and then Apple, oh, there we go. Then hit Enter, it fills it in. So then I have to insert the next column, then extract the first name by using the Flash Field. And then if I wanted to keep it, I guess that worked out well. But if I didn't, I wanted to overwrite it, it seems to me that the text to columns would work a lot more efficiently, or slicker, as it were. Otherwise, you can use the Flash Fill. Now if I go ahead and hit Undo because I've already have gone into Flash Fill, the Undo is not going to bring back the text to columns, so I'll have to do it again, and I'll do it in a blink of an eye. There you go. See how fast that was? And then, of course, to identify this, we just say last name tab first name or last and first. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, as soon as I upload a new video, you'll be notified instantly. And you can do that by coming over here and clicking on my face.
You can also click here to support me, so for $2 a month, you can have access to over 2,700 training videos, all ad-free, and for a few bucks more, you can have access to my exercises, instructor notes, quizzes, certificate of completion, and a whole lot more.